Citroën has always been a car maker that's charted a different course with car design. It's meant that several times they've been ahead of the curve on technical innovations. By getting a steal on the competition, there was always a feeling that if they could shake off some of their weirder parts of their car design, they could finally break into the mainstream large car market with a superior product. The BX was a car that had as good a shot as any of Citroën's previous cars of making that transition. As they said in their marketing material, it had originality without being eccentric. It was their chance to show to parent Peugeot just what they could do when they combined reliable parts from the Peugeot parts bin with Citroën's innovation. So did it catapult Citroën into the mainstream or was it just a big flop? This is the Citroën BX story. Citroën launched the innovative GS in 1970, but even before it had launched, they'd been looking at ideas for its replacement. A few models were produced, but Citroën's lack of finances in the early 1970s and bankruptcy in 1975 put pay to any serious development work. After it was acquired by Peugeot, money was available to fund a replacement. By 1977, some early mock-ups were produced, but work began in earnest in 1978. The team realised the importance of this project, dubbed XB. It would be the first wholly developed Citroën since the Peugeot takeover, so a lot was riding on its success. The new car needed to win over customers who'd been put off by the eccentricities of some of their previous cars. The suspension would use Citroën's now tried and trusted hydropneumatic system that gave a smooth, magic carpet-like ride. The rear suspension system would be based on the GS's, but the front would eschew the GS's double wishbones for a less expensive McPherson strut setup. The engines would be sourced from Peugeot's parts bin, the 1.4 litre from an earlier Peugeot-Renault partnership that was used for the Peugeot 104 and Renault 14, and would be used in the upcoming Citroën Visa, and the brand new 1.6 litre engine that would also appear in the Peugeot 205. The chassis would be all new. Peugeot would use it for the 405, and some of the earlier designs for Project XB would have a hint of the 405 about it. Although Citroën had produced their own styling concepts, they turned to Marcello Gandini from the Bertoni Design House. Gandini had already created a similar shape for the 1977 Reliant FW11, meant for Turkish production by the Ottosan Car Company. It ended up being too expensive to produce, so Gandini had shopped it around to Volvo as the Tundra concept two years later. Although it had lots of sharp edges that you would have thought would have appealed to boxy Volvo, they passed on it, calling it too modern and difficult to sell. Well, the words modern and difficult to sell describe Citroën's cars to a T, so they took one look at Gandini's Volvo design and said, we'll have a bit of that. But the design is only the start of the process. It also needs to be fuel efficient, and that means having an aerodynamic shape. Despite the angular style, the car got a very respectable drag coefficient of 0.34, better than the 0.36 of its predecessor. The aerodynamics would be further improved with a hydropneumatic suspension that would keep the car level while cornering. Those 1.4 and 1.6 litre engines also get better fuel economy when a car weighs less while rust-defending galvanised steel will be used in important structural and safety locations, the bumpers, bonnet and tailgate will be made of plastics and composites that would give the car a curb weight of just 870 kilograms, less than the GS despite having larger capacity engines plus more safety and luxury features. Even the fuel tank was made of thermoplastic polyethylene that meant it would melt rather than explode in an accident. The interior would have many of the traditional Citroën design elements, such as a bathroom scale style speedometer, a single wiper, and manually cancelling indicators on a rocker switch.
The BX was launched in front of the Eiffel Tower in September 1982, the colours of Citroën lighting up the famous monument, recalling the many years it was used as a large advertising hoarding for the company. The 1.4 and 1.6 litre engines were mated to both 4 and 5 speed gearboxes, giving good, if not impressive, performance. And the BX found itself in a crowded market. In France alone it faced competition from Renault, Peugeot and Talbot, and parent PSA who owned Talbot would stop selling the 1510 hatchback just to encourage more BX sales. Competition from outside France was even greater, but being a popular category, Citroën was confident that they could carve out a niche. A year later, the first diesel engine appeared, using a brand new 1.9 litre PSA engine that would appear in many other vehicles, plus Ladas, Rovers, Suzukis and Hyundais. Frugal diesels sold well in France, especially as modern engines were quieter, started quicker, and filling up no longer meant having to go eye to eye with an articulated lorry. The new engine would offer similar performance as the entry level 1.4 litre engine while getting almost 20% further on a full tank, and in France, diesel cost less to buy. Sales of right hand drive models began in the UK, and the BX estate appeared called the Brake. This wouldn't be built by Citroën, but by French coach builder Herlier, who would also go on to make the estate versions of the XM and Xantia in the 1990s. But despite selling a million BXs by 1984, all wasn't rosy. Build quality issues at the Ren factory meant that a quarter of all cars needed some sort of rework before they could leave the factory. Power steering and an automatic gearbox became options, with power steering being particularly welcome with diesels. A slightly more powerful 1.6 litre engine was available, and a more powerful 1.9 litre GT model appeared that broke the 10 second 0-60 barrier. Publicity shots would show it in red, because as we all know, if it's red it must be fast. It also used standard dials that further removed some of that Citroën quirkiness. More power would come in 1985 with the BX Sport. It was one of the last mainstream cars to use carburettors rather than fuel injection to boost performance, with the 121 horsepower 1.9 litre engine getting to 60 in 8.4 seconds. It included the obligatory 1980s body kit and a rear carry handle that lowered the drag a little but also made the BX look a little bit cooler. Mm, just a little bit anyway. If you're from the UK or Ireland and like me wondered why this car completely passed you by, it was only available as a left hand drive model. Reviewers liked the performance, but they weren't that impressed with the handling, something that they'd been dinging the BX on ever since it launched. The GX went digital with the BX Digit. It featured an all electronic instrument cluster, onboard computer, uprated car stereo and digit letters on the dashboard to remind you which model you bought. Something of a novelty at the time, it included a remote door lock. Like the Sport, this was just a limited edition model with just a few thousand cars produced. Since the BX had been first developed, other shapes had been considered such as a saloon and a coupe that included this design that looks like it didn't have any brakes judging from the rock that's been carefully put underneath the front wheel. Releasing a BX Coupe was still being considered as late as 1985, but the ultimate decision was to stick with just the hatchback and the estate. Coach builder Herlier would propose a three door estate as the Diana with longer front doors for rear access. It really seemed to be a solution looking for a problem, but Herlier would convert regular five door BX estates into vans or emergency vehicles. To help promote the BX, plans were put in place to take it rallying. The work would be a collaboration between Citroën's motorsport team and Herlier, who would not only build the rally cars, but the 200 homologation cars that would be sold to the public. The car, dubbed the 4TC, would use the SM's 5-speed gearbox and would be longer than the regular BX, as the turbocharged 2.1-litre engine was mounted longitudinally. Performance from the hydropneumatic rally car was disappointing, with its best position being 6th in Sweden, and it often broke down. 
Like the regular BX, the 40C suffered from handling problems with the front overhang causing balance problems while cornering. Sales of the 200 homologation cars were also disappointing with just 86 sold. Many of them were purchased back from the owners because of embarrassing reliability issues. What wasn't disappointing was the performance with a top speed of 137 miles an hour and a 0 to 60 of just 7.1 seconds. Citroen would team up with the Batoni design house once more for an updated reimagining of the BX, the Zabrus concept. It used the 4TC and its 2.1 litre turbocharged engine as a starting point, plus four wheel drive in a shortened hatchback body. Inside, there was a suitably futuristic dashboard, along with rotating seats covered in kangaroo hide. Probably not something that would make it into mass production, given the amount of kangaroo farms that would be required to make it work. The Zabras contained design elements that would appear in the XM that would appear just a few years later. But instead of getting an exciting update like the Zabras in 1986, the BX was only given a slight styling update. You'd be forgiven if you didn't see any changes on the outside, but if you look closely, you'd see new wing mirrors, slightly more flared front wheel arches, and new front indicators. Inside, it was a different matter. The last of Citroën's eccentricities had been vanquished, a sign that PSA's designers were now firmly in control. Engines were updated, with the old 1.4 litre Duvran engine updated for the brand new TU engine that would be used in many PSA vehicles, and a new 1.9 litre diesel. An interesting addition was the tiny 1.1 litre engine that was added for markets such as Greece, Ireland, Italy and Portugal that gave tax breaks for smaller engines, but it left the BX somewhat underpowered. The sporty models got fuel injected with the GTI 16 valve, or Cez Soupape in French. It was the first French car to get 16 valves, leaning heavily on technology from the Peugeot 205 Turbo 16 rally car. And the 1.9 litre engine propelled the car to 60 in almost 8 seconds and on to 137 miles an hour. Handling was much better, and it bested the Peugeot 405 MI16 around the test track. The GTI would upstage the 4TC by performing much better in rallying, coming second in the 1993 Swedish International Rally. Sporty petrol engines are all very well, but the BX caught my attention when they launched the 1988 BX Turbo Diesel. It seemed to mark a coming of age for diesel engines, with a car that could get to 60 in almost 10 seconds, yet still get close to 50 miles per gallon. Finally, you could have your cake and eat it, as long as you didn't mind your cake sounding a bit like a truck. BX diesels already sold well, and this encouraged even more sales, making it the UK's best-selling diesel. There's a good reason why the BX was the Caravan Club's tow car of the year more than once. The BX launched the same year Ford's Jelly Mold Sierra appeared. Although the shape was ridiculed at the time, the rounded lines would start to shift away from straight edge designs like that of the BX, and by the late 80s it was looking dated. But there was life in the old dog yet. The BX had its obligatory 1980s GTI model, and it was followed up with the equally obligatory four-wheel drive version, and of course a GTI four-wheel drive version in 1989. But by now, the BX's days were numbered, being replaced by the smaller ZX in 1990 and the larger Xantia in 1992, both much more sensible than its slightly eccentric parent. The BX soldiered on with sports models such as the 1990 1.9 litre GTI with an 8 valve engine and various closeout specials. Herlier was clearly thinking there was still some life in the BX when in 1990 they released the two seater fun 4x4 off roader based on the BX chassis that they dubbed the Scarabay Door or Golden Beetle. It was like the sort of thing Suzuki was doing with their Vitara, but like many concept cars at auto shows, it remained just a concept. Back when development of the BX began with Project XB, this was seen as an important car to continue the Citroën brand. There was a real chance the brand could disappear. PSA's other purchase, Talbot, had effectively been retired by the mid-80s. 
the BX and the smaller AX went a long way to make the switch from Citroen's range of eccentric mid-sized cars and upturned prams to cars with more mainstream appeal that turned a profit. When production ended in 1994, over 2.3 million BXs had been produced in just 12 years. The BX lost many of the quirky features that made it unique, but it gained many new fans to the Citroen brand that's still alive today. Look, you've been sitting in front of YouTube for way too long. The dishes haven't been done. You haven't called Great Aunt Ethel and the bed isn't going to make itself. You could just click on the videos on my right, but is it really the right thing to do? Is it? Is it?